A good part of the reason health centers started was the failing of traditional medicine. Many communities felt abandoned by the medical establishment. When I first came into the movement, one of the first uh, figures that you get exposed to was Jack Geiger. There's Jack Geiger right up here. Yeah, here the patron saint of the movement. And Jack ended up going to Washington wanting to start a pilot program. One of the characteristics of Jack is he took a very non-traditional view of what healthcare should be. We started writing on a prescription pad for a loaf of bread, a gallon of milk, a dozen of eggs, and he got questions and he got called back to Washington because it was like, what are you doing? And his retort was, I'm treating malnutrition. That's the way I was taught in medical school. Food is the treatment for that. The federal government created what the health center programs. That all came from Lyndon Johnson in 1965, War on Poverty. So it was a demonstration project in Mount Bayou, Mississippi, and in Boston. And that was the beginning of the health center movement. But the main thing is, it's not run by the federal government. The governance is by a majority of users of the community health center. 51% of the board is community representation. That's really unique. Clinical people were seen as workers who needed to provide service, but not people who should be in management or leadership. Health centers started in places where doctors didn't want to go, so it was natural that the first generation of leaders were a little suspicious of physicians being having any kind of control. And I remember when I got first hired at my health center back in 1980, they didn't have a medical director. They'd never had one. But the Bureau of Primary Health Care made a decision that health centers should start having a medical person in the leadership team. And from then on, I think the role of clinicians in management and leadership started to grow. The original role of NAC was to advocate for the community health centers within government and to support the health centers doing their job. The opportunities for clinicians' participation in NAC were more limited back in those early years. NAC was considered an executive director's club by the clinicians. Clinicians felt excluded. And yet I knew that for the patients to get the best care, we need collaborative work between our executives and our clinicians. It's important to have that clinical perspective because a lot of these are complicated issues. So you have to have that skill set combined to make the team work. And so as I came to NAC, my goal was to empower the clinicians. When we first got to NAC, we wanted to convene the people, self-identified leaders. So we had a meeting and not counting myself, 12 men showed up no women, nobody of color, all MDs. And so we went out and we recruited and found the right people to come in and things really took off. So it started to become clear to health center leaders that the fiscal future of health centers was going to depend as much on quality as on quantity. And I think there was a growing recognition that clinicians were going to have to be involved in producing that quality. So as the industry changed to recognize the need for quality, so did health centers. I think that helped propel clinicians into more of a leadership role. And I think we also learned that we had to be interested in all facets of community health center governance and that governance in order to participate. We could not stay in our own little lane and think that somehow we should be entitled to run things. So there was learning on both sides. In 1982 became the first clinician in NAC and one of the things I pushed on NAC, as a lot of other clinicians did, as we got a voice there, is let's attack quality issues. You know, let's, let's make certain that we not only provide access to care, but we provide access to quality care. As board chair, my emphasis was on clinical outcomes and quality measures. So we started a clinical quality committee, and they found early on, everywhere where a community health center was located, it improved the morbidity and mortality rates of those populations. That served us extremely well when we would go to Congress for funding, that we could point to data that proved that we were being effective in the care that we were delivering. At one point, uh, we decided to bring clinicians together and made up this thing called the Clinicians National Forum, which was made of clinicians from uh, different health centers, from primary care associations, and later from NAC as well, to get some consensus. We really came to the conclusion that Instead of worrying too much about structural changes, why didn't we do something clinical? Why don't we actually fix something? Diabetes was what we chose, and the health disparities collaboratives were born. 
You would come together in these things called learning collaboratives, where you would bring all the participants together and you'd have shared process and outcome measures on any particular chronic condition. And it helped us to learn what worked, didn't work, and then learning how do you operationalize what the recommendations are, what the evidence is into practice. NAC recognized that there was a place to play a role in convening and continuing the work that happened under the collaboratives, um, and to do so in this new model of care, or this new idea of patient-centered medical home. We were, in fact, ahead of everybody else. This notion that because we take care of poor people, somehow we have poor care, was flipped on its head. We were doing this stuff long before it got codified into medical homes. We also had the idea of creating our own quality center. NAC created essentially this entity within NAC and an infrastructure that could exist for health centers nationally that was focused around improving quality. That's really when it became clear that the past was mostly past, that we were no longer having to fight our way for a seat at the table, but that there was true collaboration needed. We like to say we take care of people from head to toe. From or, birth to death, in sickness and in health, we've got to do his part. That's, that's exactly that's, right. That's the vows we take at a health that's, center. We're serving 31.5 million people. It's the largest primary care network in the country. And it's a proven commodity. And our hope is that we can continue to grow and continue to improve the health of the patients. We're not the panacea. We know there are 330 million people in the country. But I'd like to think that we're a large part of the solution.